All right, um, we're going to make a couple of 3D views. Let's go sheet and make a new sheet here. And we can do a couple of neat things with 3D views. One of the things that it comes in very handy, one of the newer features is, let's say we go to the second floor and we want to do a 3D kind of view of, I don't know, maybe this upper corner here. Well, what you can do is you can um, do a crossing box like this. Okay, and then you can click this new section box tool button and it'll create a 3D section of all the elements in that you selected there. Once you have them selected, you can grab the actual section box and you can kind of squish it down. Okay. So you pick the elements that you want in the section box and then you, well, let's say we do want the top part. Maybe we want the top kind of just that one corner, okay? something like that for whatever reason okay section box now you can take the section box and hide it by saying hide the category now you have this kind of cool 3d view that you can look at if you want to bring that section box back or you want to stretch it go to your hidden lines button and then click on there go back into here and there you have like that little kind of for whatever reason, 3D detail, it can be placed on a sheet. Okay, let's go back to second floor again. Let's say we're going to focus on what's going here. Well, we just do a crossing box. Oh, we want to make sure our press and drag isn't on because we don't want to move anything. We do a crossing box and we click this handy new section box tool, creates a section box of those elements. Because this beam is so long, it had to go all the way out there. Okay, clicking out. But now, if I take my, um, because my section box was turned off, I'm going to go behind the scenes here, and I can unhide it if I want, and then go back to here. So I can grab that section box and crop that. Sometimes it's easier to do it from a perspective from a straight on view like this front. Maybe I only want that center part, right where the everything crosses. Okay, then I can click on here and swivel this around. Click out, zoom in. Okay. Maybe I want to have some sort of a detail of that. What I want to do now, if this is my default 3D view, is I want to say duplicate this view and regular duplicate. Okay, now I have a copy of it. Let's duplicate it again. Okay, now the second one, I can say, okay, well, this one, I'm going to, you know, show more information for whatever reason. Maybe I'm going to go up. Okay, there's a 3D view. Then I have this guy, different 3D view. You can right click and rename it, you know. 3D1. And right click. And 3D2. Okay. And on each one, you can click on here and say, you know, hide this category, meaning the section box itself, so you don't see it. Click, hide the category, hide the element, I guess. Go to this view, go to this view, same thing. Pick on the section box. You don't want to turn it off, you just want to hide it. Now, another th cool 3D view, got to go to the top of the main floor, and let's do a perspective camera view. We'll go to the camera view here. Let's say, okay, give me a camera view from here, looking all the way. See, I'm outside my crop region, but give me a camera perspective view of that. Okay, I'm going to turn my analytical model off. Okay, now maybe I don't like that view. I can shift middle mouse and click and swivel that around, however you please. Okay, whenever you're swiveling, it's always better to pick an element and then pivot around that point as opposed to just random pivoting. Okay, let's change this to say shaded mode maybe. Turn off the crop region. Let's go down to our 
sheet and rename this and call this, you know, 3D views. Hit OK. And then let's go grab those 3D views. So um, let's open up the sheet, double click. And let's go grab that, the perspective one, I believe is 3D1. Needs to get bigger. Um, 3D view one versus 3D one. Boy, they're really small, eh? We'll have to fix them. So these guys here go by scale because they're um, orthographic. So I can click on here and just basically say, okay, you are, you know, one to 50. Now I can make it even bigger. You are one to 20. Perfect. Click on here. Same thing. You are one to 20. So those have just normal scales. Oh, turn my press and drag back on. Yeah, that one, 1 to 20 is pushing it with that one. Let's make this one 1 to 50. Mm -mm. Yeah, 1 to 50 looks good. Okay. This guy can stay at 1 to 20. And as usual, I have to take this little guy and bring it over. Pick on here. Escape, escape, plus this guy. Now this guy is doesn't have a scale factor because it's perspective. You actually give the crop region size. I want to scale it uniformly. And let's say I want to make this about, you know, let's say 400 millimeters wide. Hit apply and hit OK. And not too bad. So I can grab this and do a shift middle mouse or shift arrow key I should say okay so we have some nice 3d perspective views we've got our detail sheet over here and when we go into our sections and stuff the idea is that in our sections we have our building section we don't necessarily add a lot of detail into that building section but when we get down to this call out over here this is where we can add, see, these are 3D elements. But what we do is we superimpose our 2D elements by using detail components. So this is where we would go in to annotate. And we would say, you know, uh, detail components, which is off of our detailing tab uh, right here. Detail line, region, detail component, and detail component families are 2D, and they sit down inside of here. Detail items. So we have, you know, concrete block. We can bring in a concrete block and place one in there. These are detail components. They're only 2D elements, okay? Even though they may look like the, the 3D objects, okay? This here is a real 3D steel beam. This guy is a detail component. OK, so we have cant strips and steel angles and flashing and blocking and bracing and all kinds of detail items. So inevitably, when we create our details, it's a combination of these 2D detail families superimposed with hatch patterns and everything else right on top of our 3D elements that are actually live in the section. If I change this column in the 3D view, it's going to change in this view. These guys that we add in here are simply 2D detail components. Now, I should probably grab this crop region here and shrink it down by clicking on here and squishing it up um, to make this a little bit more condensed. But And then in the end, I can just turn the crop region off. So lots of detail components. We also create some drafting views. We go up into here and we create some drafting views um, for adding text and notes and all kinds of stuff. And then we create our legends and schedules. So that is our Revit structural project. Um, done and all of our views and information tagged and placed onto our sheets.